The task facing Per Steinbrück, the SPD's candidate for chancellor, is to boost the party's popularity. Polls give it only about 30 percent of the vote. Celebrating the movement's proud and lengthy history may help a little. For 150 years, we have been the party people could always depend on, because our policies are guided by values, enduring values, which have lost none of their relevance over the past century and a half. The working class was sorely oppressed in the 19th century, child labor was common, and there was no safety net to speak of. On May 23, 1863, Ferdinand La founded the General German Workers' Association, a predecessor to the SPD. LaSalle said, if you want to change things, you have to do it yourself. Don't wait for others to help you. Join ranks, join the association, let us talk about what we should do. And that's how it all began. In 1878, Chancellor Otto von Bismarck introduced legislation to ban socialist parties and organizations. There followed 12 years of persecution. Many social democrats were jailed, others fled the country. The ban only lapsed in 1890. The Social Democrats won almost 20 percent of the vote that year. In 1912, they became the largest party in Parliament. In October 1918, four years into the First World War, German sailors and soldiers rebelled. Workers joined them. On November 9th, the Kaiser abdicated, and SPD leader Philip Scheidemann proclaimed the Republic. During the Weimar Republic, women got the right to vote. The eight-hour working day was introduced, and trade unions came to represent the workers in wage negotiations. But huge problems weighed on the young republic. Reparations demands, hyperinflation, and then the Great Depression. The Social Democrats came under pressure from the left and the right. In January 1933, the president appointed Adolf Hitler chancellor. On March 23rd, Parliament passed the Ermächtigungsgesetz, or Enabling Act, which suspended democracy. The Communist Party had already been banned, and of all parties represented, only the Social Democrats voted against the bill. That is something we can be proud of. It was a milestone in the history of democracy. It is an event from which we can draw strength even today. Thousands of Social Democrats were thrown into jail or sent to concentration camps, among them Kurt Schumacher. He became the first SPD leader in West Germany after World War II. In the early years of West Germany, the Social Democrats failed to thrive. They had predicted mass poverty, but instead there came an economic boom. In 1959, the party changed course. At a conference in Bad Godesberg, it dropped Marxism. It shifted from being a socialist working class party to being a modern social democratic one working within capitalism. Then in the 1960s came the student movement, representing a generation that was looking for more than just prosperity. In 1969, Willy Brandt became West Germany's first social democratic chancellor. When he took office, he made a bold promise. We want to dare more democracy. Brandt became the first chancellor to visit East Germany. He sought to reduce tensions between East and West. In 1970, he astonished the world by falling to his knees at the memorial to the victims of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. He bore no guilt. But he asked for forgiveness for the guilt of his people. That is why he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. On his watch, many new schools and universities were established. West Germany became more caring and more open. In 1974, Brandt resigned in the wake of a spy scandal and was succeeded by Helmut Schmidt. Instead of pursuing further reforms, Schmidt had to deal with a number of crises, terrorism at home and global economic crisis. Conflicts also erupted within the party. While Schmidt backed the positioning of U.S. nuclear missiles in West Germany, many colleagues were vehemently opposed. The emergent ecology movement also drew people away from the party. 
The SPD lost the 1982 general election and was to remain in opposition for 16 years. In 1998, it returned to power with Gerhard Schröder as chancellor. He faced many challenges, including bringing down the high level of unemployment. Early in his second term in 2003, Schröder pushed through a far-reaching liberalization of the labor market. It met with widespread protests, and again, many members left the party in response. Quite a few joined the new left party. Support for Schröder was waning. In 2005, he lost a vote of confidence and elections were called. The SPD came in second, becoming the junior partner in a coalition with the Conservatives. If you institute such reforms, you reduce your chances of re-election. Leadership means taking such a risk. Then in 2009, the SPD had its worst election result ever, winning just 23 percent of the vote and was out of government again. Its labor market reforms were blamed for its loss of popularity. And that legacy still dogs Per Steinbrück in the run-up to the elections in September. The Social Democrats have always sought to play an active part in changing society. It has reinvented itself from a Marxist workers' party to a Social Democratic party embracing the middle ground. But it has always remained true to its core principles of freedom, equality and fraternity.